The member for Melton. Thank you, Acting Speaker. I rise today to contribute to the Workplace Safety Legislation Amendment Bill 2019. I would like to start by thanking the Attorney General, the Minister for Workplace Safety and her hard, very hard working staff on their work on this really important piece of legislation. I want to acknowledge the great contributions by the members for Sydenham, Wendery and Bunningong. This legislation is another one of our commitments that the Andrews Labor Government took to the election last November. We committed that a new criminal offence of workplace manslaughter would be added to strengthen the Occupational Health and Safety Act 2004. Every day Victorians leave their home to go to work. They say goodbye to their loved ones. They head off to make sure they can put food on the table, a roof over their heads, and to make sure they are creating a home to come back to at the end of the day when they clock off. But we know that every year up to 30 people don't make it home from work. Their loved ones don't get to see them again. Already this year, there has been 20 deaths in the workplace. One life lost is too many. One death is a tragedy to their families. We know that many of these deaths are young people, younger people who are, who are at a greater risk, often in the hazardous industries of construction and farming. The average penalty applied to a business for a workplace fatality sits between 300,000 and 400,000. This has to change. We can't continue factoring deaths as a cost of doing business in Victoria. These aren't statistics on a piece of paper. These aren't a column on a spreadsheet. These are humans. This is our community, our families, our loved ones. In my contribution today, Acting Speaker, I would like to share my experience when I have been confronted with the pain experienced from the catastrophe of a workplace death. As most of you will know in this place, my former career was as a paramedic. Paramedics are witnesses of the aftermath and trauma of many workplace tragedies. Often many of these are never highlighted in our media. There are many traumatic events as a, uh, a paramedic will encounter during their career. However, I will never forget two incidents from my career on the front line of Victorian ambulances that still stand out for me um, 30 years later. The first one was the Sims metal explosion in Brooklyn in 1986. And the second one was a cleaner who fell to his death in the Myers store in the city in the mid 90s. Firstly, the Sims metal explosion happened on the 30th September 1986 when a furnace exploded due to incorrect chemical handling procedures. Bags of chemicals were stored without labels which resulted in a highly volatile substance accidentally ending up in the furnace, causing over four tonnes of hot molten aluminium to explode and spew into the air covering workers and damaging buildings. I was on duty that day and was part of the second ambulance crew to arrive to that horrible scene. It was like driving into a war zone. One person had already died and many more were injured. Workers were walking around dazed and burnt, their clothes burnt off. They were naked. The only thing that they were wearing was their work safety boots. Everything else had been destroyed in the intense heat and liquid metal from the explosion. We were directed towards a man who was squatting down, not a stitch of clothing on, his skin hanging off him. He was conscious and amazingly, he was still alert. He had sustained 80 to 90% burns to his body. And to this day, I can still smell the scent of his burning skin. I would like to read you an extract from the Sun newspaper dated the 6th of December 1988, which was covering the trial of this devastating event. And I quote from the article, a worker put sodium nitrate in a furnace instead of common salt. Sims metal workers, Cyril John Stanley, Kenneth James Clark, Gary David May, and Mervyn William O'Neill were killed in the September 30 blast. Seven others were injured. Prosecutor Brian Wynarski, QC, said the worker thought he was adding common salt used to stop metal sticking or reacting with the air. The plant manager, Joseph Rosanoli, said he didn't know sodium nitrate was kept at the factory. Had he known it, um, it, would have been it would have been locked up. Mr Rosanoli said the plant used only salt and potash for the furnaces and neither was dangerous. The sodium nitrate was initially shipped by Sims Metal from Footscray to a lead smelter factory next door to Sims Metal. That factory wouldn't take the shipment, so it was stored next door. The court heard that the chemicals were later moved near the furnaces by a forklift driver, who also thought it was salt. Mr Rosanoli said at the time of the blast, there was no system at Brooklyn to check chemicals before they were added to the furnace. Mr Walker, Sims Metal QC counsel at the trial, told Magistrate Mr Paul Grant that a director of Sims Metal, Mr Paul Robertson, knew the chemical was stored at Laverton North. Mr Robertson had been trying to sell it and had not known the dangers of being added mistakenly to an aluminium smelter. 
Sodium nitrate was safely put in the lead smelters and only became explosive at the higher temperatures used to smelt aluminium. Mr Wynarski told the court that Sims Metal could have foreseen the danger of an explosion. People of very high management level knew of it, he said. Mr Rosanola, who represented Sims Metal, agreed with Sims Metal counsel, Mr John Walker QC, that the explosion was caused by a chain of unfortunate actions that was tragic, terrible, bad luck. End quote. Bad luck? Four men died. Seven others were seriously injured in that explosion in September 1986. As a result, the four families that lost their loved ones have missed out on celebrating now 132 birthdays, 132 Christmases, and countless other family milestones. The severely injured workers have all sustained a massive change in their quality of life. The cost of this tragedy to the victims and families was immeasurable. The cost to the company, 48,000. The other avoidable tragedy that still stays with me is an event that happened on one Saturday afternoon at the Myers store in the city. This incident also occurred back in the mid 80s. Once again, the ambulance team I was part of were directed to the Myers store. It was reported that a male had fallen down a lift well. These were the days, of course, when the shops on Saturdays were shut at midday. A cleaner at Myers was going about his normal business cleaning outside some lifts. He opened up the lift sliding doors in those days expecting to get into the lift. However, it wasn't there. Unfortunately, the lift was not there. He fell down two floors. He landed tragically on the top of the lift. He was killed instantly. This too was a very avoidable death. Another loss of life at work and a family left to suffer immensely. I should at this point extend my thanks and the thanks of this house to all emergency service workers, the nurses, the doctors, the health professionals, and all those have to deal with the aftermath of these tragic events when they unfortunately occur. I know as a paramedic the impact that these types of events inflict on first responders, and I cannot begin to imagine the devastation that is inflicted on those loved ones who are left behind. How much more intense is the hurt, pain, and grief knowing that pers the person you loved so dearly died in something that could have and should have easily been prevented. Deaths in the workplace should not be the cost of doing business here in Victoria anymore. If those in charge of a workplace know that their employees are at risk of serious injury or death, they have a duty to prevent that risk. If they chose not to then, as is now the case, they are not performing their duties as an employer. It is time that the punishment for that failure to reflect the seriousness of not protecting your employees. The new offence outlined in this legislation does not alter the existing obligations or duties of employers. It does, however, impose a real possibility of a serious penalty, being a period of imprisonment or a fine so large that it cannot be factored into the cost of doing business. My wish would be that employers do the right thing to prevent workplace death and that no one dies at work and that families do not have to suffer. Just in response to um, some issues that have been raised by the opposition in regard to family farms, the legislation allows for um, farmers not to be prosecuted because there is discretion shown by the prosecutors. Uh, and also that a senior Crown prosecutor or the director of public prosecutions would decide whether to proceed with a prosecution for, for workplace manslaughter. And WorkSafe can refer matters to the Director of Public Prosecutions for a decision whether or not to prosecute. A prosecution may only proceed if there is a reasonable prospect of a conviction and it is in the public interest. And of course, the Director of Public Prosecutions would consider all the known facts and circumstances in deciding whether to prosecute. As the previous speakers have said uh, from our side of the chamber, we need to pass this workplace manslaughter bill because deaths in the workplace that can be easily avoidable is nothing short of criminal. I commend this bill to the House and I hope it has a speedy passage. Thank you.